solving every paradox in eight minutes. Grandfather paradox. Except for this one. Achilles and the tortoise. Achilles, a fast runner, gives a tortoise a head start in a race. The paradox says Achilles will never pass the tortoise because every time Achilles reaches where the tortoise was, the tortoise has moved a little. It keeps this is not a paradox. This is a logical fallacy. And the full story is that the tortoise, being much wiser than Achilles is, convinces Achilles that he will win with this ridiculous logic that every time Achilles reaches where the tortoise was, he's moved a little forward. Achilles is obviously fast enough to overtake the tortoise. He's never going to be stuck behind the tortoise. Ship of Theseus. You have a ship and you replace all its parts. Is it still not a paradox? It's an interesting question, but it's not a paradox. Regardless, materially, it's not the same ship, but it is called the same ship because because it's used under the same name, called the same name or whatever. And basically, because the ship has never been rebuilt from scratch, it's still called the same ship. So right is paradox. You have a heap of sand. If you remove one grain at a time, when does it stop being a heap? Basically the same as the ship of Theseus. It's not a paradox. It's just an interesting question. Shop paradox. In a town, the rule is the barber shaves those who don't shave themselves. But who shaves the barber? If he shaves himself, it breaks the rule. If he doesn't, he should be shaved according to the rule. Get a second barber. There you go. Needing something you can only have if you don't need it. For example, a pilot can avoid dangerous flights if he's insane. But asking not to fly shows he's sane. Yeah, I, I really don't understand the example here. Kind of ridiculous. Fermi paradox. If the universe is infinite, why haven't we seen any aliens? Now, I believe this is actually a paradox, but this was explained badly because how it's explained doesn't make it seem like a paradox. Just because the universe is infinitely large doesn't mean that the universe also contains every imaginable possibility of thing. Doesn't matter how big it is, we have no evidence for aliens so far. And actually, it makes less sense that if the universe is infinite, that we would have seen aliens because the larger it is, the less chance there is of us actually seeing aliens. It's more possible and probably more likely for them to be even further away. Opposite day paradox. If I say that it's opposite day, is it? Not a paradox. Unless you are the authority who gets to determine what day it is based on you specifically saying so, you can say it's get eaten by a lion day today. Doesn't make it so. Mm -hmm. Simpsons paradox. It occurs when a trend appears in different groups of data, but disappears or reverses when the group are combined. This shows that the overall conclusion can be opposite to the conclusions drawn from individual subgroups. I don't know if I would necessarily call that a paradox. It seems more to me like you're just uh, looking at the data incorrectly or something along those lines. It feels more like an assumption that the data should be one thing, but this is why you actually have to check things because it's not. Different subgroups are different sets of data. Tolerance paradox. Unlimited tolerance can make tolerance disappear, as it allows too much intolerance. For a tolerant society to survive, it must not tolerate intolerance. So balance the tolerance. There you go. Bootstrap paradox. Simple. If a time traveler gives a young Einstein a book with the theory of relativity, and Einstein publishes it as his own, who's the original author? The original author is the original author. It doesn't matter who published it, it doesn't change who the author is. Cocktail paradox. Believing you will soon succeed decreases your chances of succeeding. Meanwhile, maintaining a belief that you will succeed one day increases your chance of succeeding. Not exactly a paradox, it's just mental framing. Jevons paradox. Technological improvements that increase the efficiency of resource use tend to cause an overall increase in resource consumption because people like the product more. Again, it's kind of how you look at the problem, but I wouldn't exactly call it a paradox. This is also way oversimplified here, and it's only made to seem as if this is how things work. Whereas it's still a decrease overall, because if the product was never improved to be more efficient, then the use for the, that product would have increased without the efficiency also increasing. Olbers' paradox. Why is the sky dark if there are a vast number of stars in the universe? What is space? Emptiness, vacuum. What is needed in order to illuminate? Not emptiness. If you shine a flashlight into the sky, you can illuminate anything? No. You need objects around for the light to hit and illuminate. Not a paradox. Paradox of thrift. Saving more money individually is generally a good thing, but it can lead to economic problems for everyone as it could cause reduced consumption and economic growth. Yeah, if you completely ignore the fact that um, money is kind of needed for things. If you were going to say something like, I don't know, hoarding dust would be better then because dust has absolutely no use, this would make perfect sense. But hoarding money, it's pretty much impossible for anyone to hoard money and, and, and never spend it because you kind of need it for certain things, for many things. Unless you're going to live completely off the grid or live in, in, in some native tribe or something along those lines, or everything that you do and have is all self-made and whatever. But also you have to be outside of the control of any sort of government because otherwise you're not going to be able to have any land because that's going to cost money and that's going to be taxes. Hanging paradox. A condemned prisoner is told he'll be hanged on a weekday next week, but the execution will surprise him. Friday is the latest possible day for the hanging since it would still be a surprise on Thursday. But if it hasn't happened by Thursday night, Friday is no longer a surprise. He concludes it must occur on Thursday, yet that would also be expected. So what about the other friggin' five days there? It would most likely be on one of the other days that are not Thursday or Friday. Also, it says 
Specifically, the execution will surprise him, not the day the execution is. So what's stopping the the surprise from being, oh, I don't know, one day while he's asleep, someone just slips a knot over his neck. And then as soon as he wakes up and, you know, a series of pulleys and crap, and then he's just hang dangling above the bed. That would be a surprise. Value paradox. Essential things like water are cheaper despite being crucial, while non-essentials like diamonds are more expensive. That's not really a paradox. You're assuming that because their essential needs to exist, that they need to have more dollar value. If you were to increase the cost of the essential needs to exist, you would eventually have less people to take value from. More of a terrible assumption than anything. Pinocchio paradox. We're not solving that one either because that one's a natural paradox. Hedonism paradox. The more directly one seeks pleasure or happiness, the less likely they are to achieve it. So you're not exactly seeking happiness, you're using happiness as an excuse. What you're actually chasing is a pursuit of more. Crocodile paradox. A crocodile steals a child and promises its return if the parent correctly predicts what the crocodile will do. Ridiculous. Why well, it's called the crocodile paradox. Should have actually been called the agreement paradox instead. But also I see no paradox in this because you can't actually predict the future. The ultimate option is that the crocodile is not going to give the child back. What happens when a sword sharp enough to cut any shield meets a shield strong enough to block any blade? They both basically scuff each other a bit. Or, you know, maybe they were just descriptions given to thing as a way to market them or something. You know, like calling my keyboard is the fastest typing keyboard in the world. Marketing. Dichotomy paradox. Imagine walking towards a destination. To reach it, you'd first- And this is not a fucking paradox. This is the same shit as Achilles and the tortoise and logical fallacy. In order to get from here to my door, I have to travel half that distance. Oh my god, but to get there, I have to travel half- <coughs> half that distance but to get to half the half the distance i have to get to half 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 the distance so i'll never get there <gasps> fucking ridiculous stupidity causing you to not be able to reach your destination bullshit arrow in motion is continuously changing its position the paradox argues that at any instant it can't move to where it isn't or where it is making it stationary this paradox suggests the arrow is stationary the entire time also ridiculous logical fallacy and completely ignores how physics works the arrow actually bends and flexes and shit while it's in the air as it's going around. This is just completely ridiculous. Grand hotel paradox. Infinitely big hotel. If all rooms are occupied, in order to accommodate you, the hotel could, hypothetically, move the guest from room one to room two. This would move every guest from their current room to a new room, which is possible since there's an infinite number of rooms. So that's not really a paradox then. It's just infinite. What's the paradox again? What's true if a card has the phrase, the sentence on the other side of this card is true on the front side, and the phrase, the sentence on the other side of this card is false on the back side? Nothing exactly happens. But sure, you could call this a paradox. It's not like the world, the, the universe is just gonna, you know, explode. Imagine that someone says, I'm lying. If the liar is indeed lying, then the liar is telling the truth, which means that he just lied about lying. Not a paradox, because the, the statement, I'm lying, cannot really be used independently of anything else. It's completely missing the context. So if he is lying about what he just said, then there would be the context. This is also assuming that because this person is labeled liar, that it's impossible for him to ever tell the truth under any circumstances, which is also slightly ridiculous. Reminds me of the riddle of the two doors and there's a guard at each one. You can only ask three questions to pick the right door. The right door, not the left. <laughs> the context there is that one can only lie and one can only tell the truth. Grain of millet paradox. When a grain of millet falls, it makes no sound. But when a thousand grains fall, they do. Thus, many of nothing become something. The truth is that it does make a sound. It's just that it's so inaudible that we don't perceive it. So I don't know why exactly this is in this video because it's not even a paradox to begin with. He explains why. Boltzmann brain. I don't see how it's really a paradox. It's interesting thought. You can't really take probability based on a bunch of maybes and then proceed to call that a paradox. By this logic, the simulation theory should be a paradox as well. Paradox of enrichment. Increasing the food available to an ecosystem may lead to instability and even to extinction. That's not a paradox. Too much of something good can still be bad. It sounds like a paradox because you think that good can only be good and bad can only be bad. So if something is good, how can it possibly be bad? Ridiculous cognitive framing or something, maybe that's not quite the right term. You know, water is good for you, but if you drink too much of it, you can die also. Medicine helps to cure you, but if you have too much of it, it can make you sick. Recovery paradox. Successfully fixing a problem with a defective product may lead to higher consumer satisfaction than in the case where no problem occurred at all. Item exists. Before it was just going along, being stagnant. Now we have problem. <gasps> ah, interestingness. Now when you fix it, damn, it's, ah, it's exciting. It's working again. So of course there's going to be renewed excitement. It's Stability and instability paradox. When two countries each have nuclear weapons, the probability of a direct war between them greatly decreases, but the probability of minor or indirect conflicts between them increases. This is just, well, we both have too many uh, of this ultra powerful weapon where if one of us used it, <laughs> everything would be fucked. We'd both be fucked, so no one's going to win. So uh, because we can't really do that, let's let's see 
other areas where, where we can whip our dicks out and, and swing them around each other and see who's is larger. These other smaller conflicts would have happened regardless of whether they were both equal in nuclear power or not. Ironic process theory. Individuals' deliberate attempts to suppress or avoid certain thoughts renders those thoughts more persistent. That's not really a paradox, that's just ironic. It literally says irony. Paradox of choice. Eliminating consumer choices can be beneficial because it greatly reduces anxiety for shoppers. So this isn't really a paradox, again, because if there's too many choices, there's too much anxiety, therefore you say, fuck this, I'm not dealing with this. But if you want to say that you reduce the possible choices and therefore amount of choices made increases, then sure, but that's not really a paradox because that's still two different things. It's the same word, but in a different context. Birthday paradox. To have a 100% probability of at least two people in a group having the same birthday, you'd need 366 people. To have a 50% probability, however, you'd need just 23 people. It's more of an interesting quirk of math. It's not really a paradox. Schrodinger's cat. Until observed, the machine would simultaneously release the poison and not release the poison. The cat would be both alive and dead. This would obviously work only if we don't consider the cat or the machine as observers. You made Schrodinger's cat more complicated. Two, it doesn't matter what we or anyone considers to be an observer. It matters what actually is an observer. Observer. And Schrodinger's cat was also an example to make it easier to explain how quantum mechanics work. And realistically, it's not really so much a paradox as it is lack of knowledge. And I don't mean lack of intelligence, I mean lack of knowledge about what's going on. If there's a cat inside a box, and we have no way to determine anything about what is happening inside that box in any way, shape, or form whatsoever, then we can sort of say that it's both. And it's more of just a, there's a 50% chance of it being alive, 50% chance of it not. In reality, there's a lot higher chance of it being dead because if there, if it's inside a box where we can't gather any information about what's in there, there's most likely no oxygen either, and therefore the cat's dead. But ignoring reality. Twin paradox. According to Einstein, the faster you move through space, the slower you move through time. If your identical twin became an astronaut and went on a spaceship that traveled at the speed of light, you'd be some years older than him when he returned. If you killed your twin, then you would also end up being older. Is that a paradox? Because you killed your twin? No, not really. Friendship paradox. On average, your friends tend to have more friends than you do. This happens because people who are social and have more friends are more likely to be your friends. That's, again, more just like probability or whatever. Raven paradox. If you wanted to confirm that all ravens are black, finding a black raven supports your claim. But the, the <sighs> paradox suggests that also finding something that is not a raven and not black, such as a green apple, supports your claim. Supports your claim. Okay, what logical fallacy do we know of that has to do with supporting a claim? Burden of proof. Fallacy. Not a paradox. Fallacy. True paradox. If the temperature is 90 and the temperature is rising, is 90 rising? You've got to be joking. The farmers were outstanding in their fields. It's not a paradox. It's just if you're going to have a low IQ perspective on how to interpret the temperature is 90 and rising and be like, oh, where's the rising 90? Where's this 90? I don't see no 90 outside rising up into the sky. What the fuck? Then that's more of a lack of intelligence on your part. There can't be a smallest uninteresting number, as if it's the first uninteresting one. It becomes interesting for that fact. It naturally- every single number is interesting. I don't understand what this one even fucking means. What's the paradox here? What is interesting number? Unique number? Yes, every number is unique, because it's its own number. Da? Irresistible force paradox. What happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? Immovable doesn't necessarily mean impenetrable, indestructible, unbreakable. So the unstoppable force will just go through it without necessarily moving it. It'll either penetrate it or it'll blow part of it apart. It will, you know, damage it as it goes through, or you know, easy, simple. If there is one winning ticket in a large lottery, it is reasonable to believe of any particular lottery ticket that it is not the winning ticket, but it is not reasonable to believe that no lottery ticket will win. That's not a paradox. That's called truth. After preparing to avoid a catastrophe and lessening the damage, the perception regarding the catastrophe would be much less serious due to the limited damage caused after. So the perception after the disaster that we specifically prepared for to mitigate and make less of a problem seems to be that it was less of a problem. How the fuck is that a paradox? That's not a paradox, that's literally just reality. This is ridiculous. At least with how things were explained, in reality, only like two real paradoxes. Okay, three. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. Let me know how I'm wrong, if I'm wrong. Or if you agree. Or if you have any other thoughts about any of these paradoxes. Bonus one. If God is all-powerful, can he make a rock so big that he can't move it? Answer. If God is all-powerful, yes, he can choose as well to limit his power. Bonus two. Achilles and the tortoise. As a paradox of Achilles and the tortoise is a refers to one of the several known fallacies that are the ancient Greek philosopher Zeno of Ilia attributed more it attempts to show that a fast runner like Achilles could never catch a tortoise in a race when he grant her a head start. 
The course of the argument is as follows. Before Achilles can overtake the tortoise, he must first obtain their lead. In the time that it needs for the turtle but has gained a new, albeit smaller, tab, the Achilles also to go and get. Is he succeeded that the turtle has turned a way one tab and so on, even smaller. The edge that has the turtle will be coming smaller and smaller, but nevertheless always remain a projection, so that the faster runner of the turtle, although more and more approaches, but they never catch up, and thus could not overtake. In fact, a faster is a slower one, but always ask if he has only enough time for it. This is proportional to the projection and inversely proportional to the velocity difference of the two runners or with a constant ratio, is inversely proportional to the two speeds. Note 1. Zeno's fallacy is based on two errors. There are different views. I think there's a little more fucking errors in this shit. There are different views about what Zeno wanted to show his paradoxes. It is often believed that they should support the Iliadic thesis. See Parmenides of Ilia, according to which there is no multiplicity, but only one immutable and indestructible whole give in reality and that the everyday perception of diversity and movement is mere appearance. It is certain, however, that this ancient consideration for conceptualization of infinity has contributed and is still uh, used as a teaching example. The paradox is delivered directly, but can be found in Aristotle's Physics and Simplicius commentary on it. Related paradoxes that are attributed to Xenon, not Zeno anymore, are the division of paradox and arrows a paradox. Content not related to the Zeno paradox is one of Lewis Carroll in his short dialogue, What the Tortoise Said to Achilles, What the Tortoise Said to Achilles, imagined argument with which he addresses the difference between object and metalingualistic implication and occasionally as Carroll paradox is called. Who is Carroll paradox and why is she being called?